Hi, uh, so I'm going to talk a little bit today about the Olympus Trip 35. Uh, this is a very simple, straightforward camera, but it's also uh, one of my favorite cameras. Uh, I found one actually secondhand at a Value Village for, I think I paid about $10 for it, so it was a very good price for a very good camera. And over the years, I've read various online websites and forums where people have praised the Trip 35 up and down. Uh, and what I've learned over the last little while since I've owned a Trip 35 is uh, it pretty much deserves all that praise. It's a wonderful little camera, very, very simple, uh, yet it can really give some uh, excellent quality shots. Uh, it's a pretty straightforward camera. You don't have many controls at all. Uh, it's basically doesn't need any batteries whatsoever, and that was a big selling point for the camera and it was called the Trip 35 because it was intended for traveling and not needing to take batteries was certainly a big selling point as many of you know while you're traveling sometimes it can be a challenge to find batteries depending on where you are uh, but yeah basically the only things that you can control are uh, basically you have a focus on the bottom here you might be able to see that down there uh, so it basically ranges from about three feet to infinity and that's about it you can really there's really nothing else that you can control uh, there is an automatic mode which works quite well um, but i find that sometimes if you put it on automatic mode uh, it gets a little picky and it won't take pictures if it senses that the lighting isn't quite correct enough. A little red flag will pop up in the viewfinder if you try to take a photo and if the selenium cells sense that the lighting isn't quite correct, uh, it won't let you take the photo. But that's only in automatic mode. Basically what I find, uh, I tend to do a lot of nighttime photography and if I'm doing nighttime shots I basically just put it on 2.8 and away I go and it gives really really excellent nighttime shots uh, again not much to look at it's very very simple you, of course you've got a hot shoe you've got uh, the shutter release uh, you do have the capability to plug in a, a cable release uh, cable uh, shutter release cable I should say uh, and that's about it uh, again it does use the selenium cells um, from what I've read, it's a good idea to make sure you keep a lens cap on the camera when not in use because uh, over years the selenium cells do tend to wear out. Um, but basically the it has a Zuiko lens which is very much uh, revered for giving very sharp and uh, very high quality images. And like I said, I've, I've used it a lot and I've never been let down. It's a great, great little camera. Um, you do see them every once in a while. They pop up at yard sales, at garage sales, at flea markets. Uh, like I said, I got mine for about $10. Definitely a good deal. So if you do see, happen to see one, definitely pick it up. Uh, it's a great, great little camera. Um, so yes, so I would definitely say the Trip 35 is one of my favorite cameras. Excellent for nighttime photography. And if you do see one, definitely pick it up. Oh, and one more thing I will mention, uh, there's basically two shutter speeds and again the selenium cells will decide which speed it will go with. Uh, I believe it's one two hundredth of a second and one fortieth of a second. Uh, but again, I, I, I've not had a lot of run-ins with the camera. Um, again, 90% of the time I'm pretty happy with with the uh, quality of the images and again if I'm doing nighttime I just put it on f2.8. Um, also, the you can choose the ASA, you might see that there on the side, uh, basically, and the ASA it goes from 25 to 400, and that might seem quite limiting, but really, um, for a lot of situations, um, it works great. Uh, again, you might think, well, if it doesn't go above 400, that's kind of limiting, but really, uh, for, for the type of camera it is, basically just a, a general point and shoot, uh, it works fine. And basically, from what I've been told, um, at the time that this camera was manufactured, pretty much any films that were over 400 ASA were not very reliable, not very good quality. So I think that was a big thing that they kept in mind, and I think that's why they only made it from a range of 25 to 400. 
Also, I'll mention that this camera was actually manufactured between, I think, 1967 and 1984, and thousands and thousands of them were manufactured. A uh, very, very popular camera, one of Olympus's biggest selling cameras, and uh, it did very, very well for them. Also, I've been told that if you look in the back, uh, underneath the pressure plate, there is if you remove the pl pressure plate, which I'm not going to do right now, but I have done in the past, right underneath here there is a, a code which consists of some numbers and symbols. And if you look up your code online, you can determine exactly what year and what month your camera was manufactured. So that's it for the Olympus Trimp 35. Again, one of my favorite cameras. Again, if you happen to find one secondhand, pick it up. You will not be disappointed. Thanks a lot. Happy shooting.